Welcome. Read One Communications presents The Scholar's Chair. Tonight's guest is Muslim author, educator, and intellectual Dr. Safi Koskos. Our topic of consideration is Adam and salvation according to the Quran. Reciting verses from the Quran, here in the Scholar's Chair is Dr. Safi Koskos. When your Lord took out of the loins of the children of Adam all their descendants. He called upon them to bear witness about themselves. He asked, am I not your Lord? To which they answer, yes, we bear witness of this. He said, I am reminding you now so that on the day of resurrection, you do not say we were not aware of this. This is Surah 7, verse 172. We offered the trust to the heavens the, the earth and the mountains, but they refused to bear it and feared it. Yeah. What is this trust Allah is talking about here? We're going to find out all, all about this later on. Uh, let's now read the verses that Allah revealed to summarize the story of Adam's creation. The way Allah prepared him for, for his terrestrial life, his death on earth and his resurrection for a day of judgment, followed by eternal life. If we read the, those verses superficially, they will sound like the verses in Genesis, but they're not. So let me read them. Please take note of them because we're going to refer to each one of them and try to explain almost every word in these verses. Mm -hmm. The Quran says, when your Lord told the angels, I will place a steward on earth, Khalifa in Arabic, they said, will you put someone there who will corrupt it? and shed blood while we glorify, praise, and sanctify you? Yeah. He said, I know things that you don't know. He taught Adam the names of all things and then showed them to the angels. He said, tell me the names of the... They said, may you be exalted in your glory. We know nothing except what you taught us. You are the all-knowing, the wise. He said, Adam, tell them their names. When he told them their names, he said, did I not tell you that I know the hidden reality of the heavens and the earth? And I know what you show and what you hide. Mm -hmm. When he told the angel, bow down to Adam. After Adam told them their names, God turned to them and said, bow down to Adam. They all bowed down except Iblis, who refused to, uh, out of arrogance, and became among the ungrateful. We said, Allah saying, Adam, live with your spouse in the heavenly garden and eat whatever you want, but do not come near this tree or you will be unjust. But Satan made them slip and caused them to be expelled from where they were. And we said, God saying, go, go down, you will be enemies to one another. And on earth, you will have a temporary abode and livelihood. Mm -hmm. Then Adam received words and he accepted his repentance. Mm -hmm. He alone is the acceptor of repentance, the mercy giver. We said, all of you go down from it, the garden. When my guidance come to you, whoever follows my guidance will not have fear or grief. Mm -hmm. Those who deny the trust or reject our revelation will be heading for hell, where they will remain forever. Mm -hmm. These verses are from Surah 2, from verse 30 to verse 39. Mm -hmm. Now let's start talking about these verses, about the story of Adam, but we need to stop at various points and explain. Mm -hmm. What are these verses trying to tell us? Adam was created as a perfect human being by a perfect creator. Right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah at teen we have certainly created the human being in the best of stature. Mm -hmm. Nine, 95 is the, is the Surah. Four, four, uh, four, four is the number of the verse. We also said in Surah al sajda he perfected, he Allah, perfected everything which he created and began the creation of the human being yeah. from clay. Mm -hmm. This is Surah number 32, verse 7. He began the creation of, of the human being, meaning the creation of the human being went into stages. Yeah. Creation of Adam, what Allah is telling us about right here, yeah. is a final stage. So mm -hmm. let's think of st in stages, rather it was kun fayakun and everything was there. Uh -huh. It doesn't work like this with a human being. It might work with the whole universe, mm -hmm. but a human being 
It takes time to teach him, to train him, to show him how to get things done. We'll see that. Yes. Human perfection can be demonstrated by the qualities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam versus the humanoids that existed before him. Yes. The first of these qualities is consciousness. It is simply in, in its simplest definition. Consciousness is the ability to be aware of one's own existence and the existence of the world around him. Yeah. This is demonstrated by the instruction Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the angels. And when I have fully formed him, he said, and breathe into him of my spirit, fall and prostrate yourself before him. Yeah. This is Surah 15, verse 29. That spiritual breath of Allah given to Adam allowed us to have consciousness. It is like a program that allowed human beings to process data about themselves mm -hmm. and the world around them and made them better than all other creatures, including angels. But, uh, but that wasn't all. Mm -hmm. He taught Adam the names of all things. The Quran says, this is in Surah 2, verse 31. Mm -hmm. God is telling us here that Adam was not only conscious, but teachable. teachable. He was given the ability to learn. Mm -hmm. Teaching, in this case, is an activity done by Allah. In order for Adam to learn, he must have been given another program that will enable him to use more than just thinking. It involves processing data through his senses, when he sees, when he hears, when he smells, and reacting to it with feelings and intuition. So you are saying that God, the yes. uh, Quran is saying that God is the teacher of man. Uh, when it says that clearly in the case of Adam, mm -hmm. it says, mm -hmm. he taught Adam, mm -hmm. he himself taught Adam. Mm -hmm. So in, in the case of Adam, uh, this is definitely the case. In the case of other human being, it says all knowledge comes from God. But in order, this is a very intelligent question you just asked me. In order for, for, for us human beings to learn from Allah, we should use the tools of knowledge that he made available to us. I will comment on that while going through the, my presentation here, because these tools of knowledge are also mentioned somewhere else in the Quran clearly. The question I need to ask myself here, and I ask everybody else to share with me, what does God mean? He taught Adam the names of everything. What's in a name? Why did Allah choose to teach Adam the names? Asma, Asma in Arabic uh, involves uh, not just distinguishing what I'm looking at and I want to give a name to, but I have to make a noise, a voice mm -hmm. that refer to that particular thing that I'm naming. Yeah. So uh, Asma in Arabic invol involves a voice to communicate the characteristic of what we are naming. Okay. Naming things around us, we are told, will give us power over these things. Mm -hmm. So if Adam is going to become the steward, Khalifa, over these things, he will need to start by identifying them mm -hmm. and learning what they are. This is why God started from the beginning and the beginning of the teaching process of Adam was to teach him to identify everything around him and to be able to name each one of these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After he learned the names of everything, Adam, at the order of Allah, told the angels the names, meaning that Adam was able to talk and communicate in a clear way to the angels. Mm -hmm. To know the names of things around him, Adam must have learned to identify everything and learn its name. Communicating through words, in addition to his ability to learn and to think conceptually, mm -hmm. Adam was superior to the angels. In fact, mm -hmm. the greatest gift he received from God is not mentioned yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> in the next program given to Adam, he was given a will. Only Allah had a will up to that point. Mm -hmm. But he decided to give Adam a free will. But you can't will unless you align your will with that of God. Allah says in the Quran, mm -hmm. in Surah at takwir chapter 81, verse 29, وَلَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ 
But the fact, the fact that God is telling me that I won't be able to implement my will unless it's aligned with Allah's will, show that we, I have a will and he has a will. All I have to do is align my will with his. If I learn what he wants from me, I'll be able to align my will with his. So the Quran is telling me how to learn. As a matter of fact, there is a theory of knowledge in the Quran. We'll get to it another time maybe, but there is a, a complete theory of knowledge that we, we can learn from the Quran. But here in this particular context, Allah is saying, I'm giving you a free will. Mm. And you need to align that will with my will in order for you to be very successful in your new abode that I'm going to send you to, which is planet Earth. Mm. This is practically expressed when Allah told Adam that he is free to eat from any tree except one. It wasn't about the tree, but about teaching Adam this new program that will allow him from here on to decide freely uh, how to deal with various issues that he is facing. The first test was to eat or not to eat from that tree. So it's a new program. How would you, how would a programmer teach a user the program? He'll say, sit down, let's do this, that, and the other. And yes, you're correct. No, you're wrong. This is exactly the exercise that God put Adam through. Yes. He can eat from everywhere except that tree. It can be any tree. The first test was to eat or not to eat from that tree. He decided to eat. This program also allowed Adam, when he made the wrong choice, to realize it, and he did realize it. Mm -hmm. After he ate, he immediately asked God, what, what to do now? <laughs> I made a mistake. What to do now? God taught him how to repent and ask for forgiveness. That's what the Quran teach. That's right. He, he did, and he was forgiving. The verse says, then Adam received words from his Lord, and he accepted, he means Allah, accepted his repentance. He alone is the acceptor of repentance, the mercy giver. Chapter 2, verse 37. This takes us way apart from the Bible account of what happened. The Bible talks about the first sin. The Quran does not talk about any sin. The Quran is talking about various decisions made by Adam. Some of them are correct. Some of them are wrong. Yes. Therefore, uh, we just, he, he's learning. Yes. And God is bearing with him. And he's learning to ask for forgiveness. And God taught him how to ask for forgiveness. And when, when he felt true need for repentance, God told him how to ask for repentance. So, so Adam is actually learning from God discernment, isn't he? I mean, he's yes, he, absolutely. He, yes, yes, so indeed. How, how do we how do we choose things correctly? Hmm. And he will tell him that whoever follow that guidance on that planet, and that guidance has always a relationship to the first verse we read, that God asked us, "Am I not your Lord?" Hmm. We're looking at him. We said, "Of course you are. Yes, you are." He said, now on earth, you can't see me like you are seeing me in heavens. Are you still coming? going to come to me with your free will? Mm. This, is, this is the key. Yeah. Allah informed Adam after learning that his freedom comes with consequences, that he is ready now to start the test on earth. Mm. There is no punishment uh, mentioned about being on earth. It's a test. Right. And he prepared the planet for us. He prepared it in a wonderful way. He created us uh, to be able to live through the air we breathe. And that air is available everywhere. If we don't pollute it, we'll preserve it. This is what Allah wants from us. But what is this test? If we remember the pre-life promise we made, we will understand that human beings are on earth to practice their freedom to choose God their creator without any compulsion, free, with freedom. Each one of us is free to make the right decisions or the wrong decision, up to us. Every decision a human being makes is only one of two possible choices. Let me repeat this. Every decision a human being makes on this planet is one of only two possible choices. Mm. The choices are 
am I doing this to please God or to please myself? Everything we do, this program we're doing right now, either we're doing it to please God and we'll get rewarded yeah. from it, or we're doing it so people will say, oh, this guy, Kaskas, is intelligent. Right. He's saying some nice things. Right. Then I will be doing it to feed my own ego, my own selfishness. It is like this with every decision we make on this planet. There is no third choice. I challenge people around the world to come out with a third choice. No one was able to find one. Yeah. Being on earth is not a punishment by God. It is rather a test of our free will and the innate nature he gave us. Futra, the innate nature he gave each one of us mm -hmm. to enable us to choose. Allah told us in the Quran, we said, all of you go down from it, the garden. When my, guidance, when my guidance come to you, whoever follows my guidance will not have fear or grief. Those who deny the truth and reject our revelations will be heading for hell where they will remain forever. Surah 2, verse 38 and 39. So Allah is telling us that after our short life on earth, we will die and we will be resurrected on a day of judgment when God will judge every one of us separately uh, of decisions made on earth and our action that follow. Yes. We are told that the quality of our deeds is based on our intentions. In the end, however, if we go to heaven, it will not be because we earned it, but because of God's loving mercy and his grace. Rejecting God's guidance that was sent to us repeatedly will guide the rejecter straight to hell. Our Prophet وسلم, said, by the one who holds my soul in his hand, no one will enter Jannah based on his deeds. His companion said, not even you, messenger of Allah. He said, not even me, unless Allah grants me his mercy and a favor from him. Yeah, yeah. So basically, this is what I wanted to tell you. This is the message I wanted to relate. And uh, this is my understanding of how, uh, why, why we were created, why are we here, and where are we going from here? Uh, now, if you have any question, you're welcome. It seems to me that the ideas are very consistent uh, with the, the, the prophet Abraham uh, when he was standing before Pharaoh and the Pharaoh asked who was guiding him. He said that that which uh, created me also guides me. And I, I find that to be very, very stimulating and in accord with what you just explained um, uh, about the, the first human being. And, uh, yes. and I think that one of the things that I, I find very uh, uh, exciting, uh, Dr. Koskos, is that you are, uh, you are defining uh, human identity in ways that have uh, been very, very uh, helpful uh, to anyone who who, hope to, who listens, um, would you con would you con would you confirm that the the first um, human being uh, is uh, by nature or by the nature of God's creation of him um, the same attributes uh, throughout all of humanity? Yes, yes, indeed, and. Uh, Actually, the first human being that was created and the last human being that was created today uh, share the same nature, uh, that nature we call in Arabic futra, and we, I translated it as our innate nature, when in fact what it is, is the, uh, the, the group of programs uh, that we were given mm -hmm. out of God's mercy and justice. So we will all have the same tools of knowledge uh, that will help us realize mm -hmm. that he's our creator and we are here on earth, not as Abid, not as his slaves or his servants. Mm -hmm. That's not what he says in the Quran, but as his Ibad. Ibad and Abid are similar words, but mean tremendously different things. Abid, Ab Abid are slaves. Ibad are worshippers. Mm. So God called us all worshippers. And in Arabic, that word, Ibad, 
uh, can carry the meaning and it's opposite. That means you can worship him or not worship him, mm -hmm. but you're still his ibad while mm -hmm. you're on earth. Right. And we are abid, we are slaves only one time on the day of judgment where no one is allowed to even open his mouth unless he got permission to do that. Mm -hmm. So here on earth, we are absolutely free to do anything we want. Free will. The day of judgment, mm -hmm. we become truly slaves. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we go into eternal life. Those who followed God's guidance will be close to God, and that's heaven. Yeah. And those who opposed, willingly opposed his guidance will go away from God, and that's hell. Uh, see, we all, we all like to think that the description of in the Quran of heaven and hell, it's it's not it's not an exact description. Description that will allow us to understand that there will be uh, happiness or pain at the end. Uh, you know, nobody knows. Nobody been there and came back. I believe Allah's words that He said them as He said them. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to explain that when we don't go along with God's guidance. We're choosing not to do so. Gotcha, it's not right. like it's pre-written and we are only actors in a silly play, you know? Yes. Yeah. No, we are the main actors and we are rewriting the script as we go. Yes. Because I can be opposing God's will right this minute and feel guilty a minute later, repent and ask for, uh, uh, you know, forgiveness. Yes. This is totally opposite to the Christian uh, uh, ideas about salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, if I, I may, I can uh, give you in a sentence or so uh, what, the, what the Christian idea is. Mm -hmm. We are created with a faulty nature, sinners by default. Mm -hmm. right. right. And there is no way we can reconcile with God mm -hmm. unless God out of his love for us will send his only begotten son to die on the cross for us yeah. as a sacrifice for our sins. Right, right, right. Islam, the Quran actually could have confirmed this if that was true. Yeah. But since the Quran is the last revelation, God chose to set the record straight. He said, no one will bear the sins of anyone else. Yeah. Each one is responsible for his own deeds. We don't inherit the position of your father or your forefathers because they were not believers. You are uh, yourself responsible for your own faith. Yes. You decide to believe, that's it. You're starting anew. Otherwise, the, 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 the little baby uh, born down the street a few hours ago will be ridden with guilt before he even had a chance. And, and you so were, each one is responsible for his own death. Yes, you have said it. Uh, you, you have said it clearly uh, that we are responsible. We have yes. a responsibility to God and, and ourselves and, and humanity. Um, yes. And, and probably even creation itself. I, I, was, I, I, am, uh, I am very intrigued by, by your, your explanation. Um, uh, there are people who, of course, will, will say that the Christian notion of God is not the contemporary notion uh, of Christian uh, believers these days. Uh, uh, the, you're referring to the original sin, um, which, which says that humanity was born a sinner. And, yeah. uh, and uh, most Christians, uh, most informed uh, theologians these days would which will say publicly that that is not their position. Um, but do you uh, feel that the Quranic explanation is much more in accord with the, the modern um, man's uh, need for this kind of clarity of, of thought in relationship to God? Uh, fortunately for me, uh, I don't have to weigh the modern needs with my understanding of the Quran. Right. The understanding for the Quran, <laughs> the understanding of the Quran is permanent. Yes. God gave it to me as a permanent record of what he did, what he planned, and what my responsibility toward his plans are. Mm 
-hmm. He told me, I created you because you, you saw me personally, I personally. He's telling me, you saw me and I ask you, am I not your Lord? And you said, yes. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna put you where you have a free will. You didn't have a free will when you said yes. Now you have a free will because you accepted that the trust, the trust is freedom. The trust is freedom. The trust we decided to accept that was rejected by the heavens and the earth was freedom. Freedom to okay. choose. Excuse me? Freedom to choose. I yes. Guess. Yeah. Freedom to choose. Mm -hmm. Look, there is no other freedom because we're still living on his earth, in his universe, in his galaxy. Mm. So freedom from what? Only freedom to choose. And this choice either will give me eternal life with him or eternal life away from him, you know? Yes, yes. And I, since I want to be with him, I'll follow his script. And his script is extremely clear in the Quran. It's not subject to my interpretation or yours or somebody else's yeah. interpretation. I would have stuck to the original exegesist explanation mm. of the Quran, but they didn't have the tool of knowledge we have today. They did not travel the world the way I did or you did. Yes. They didn't see other planets and other stars and other the galaxies the way we are able to see them, yes. practically see them. Yes. So we are in a better place to understand the words of God. This universe in the Quran is called the words of God. Mm -hmm. And the more I understand the words of God, the more I understand the word of God in the Quran mm -hmm. that he gave me. Mm -hmm. The Quran is telling me who I am, why I'm here, and where I'm going from here. I might as well believe it. He had no reason to misguide me. Mm -hmm. He's faithful. Yes. I believe him. So yes. all I have to do is ask myself before I do anything. I call this the, the, the theory of everything. Mm -hmm. Before I do anything, any day of the week, all year long, am I doing this to please Allah or to please myself? It's very simple. Yes, it is simple. As long as I keep asking myself that question and making the right choice, my intention will be to please Allah. That's the right choice. Then... Allah didn't make me responsible for the results. I'm not responsible for the results. I'm responsible for the right intention before I do anything. The choice, the choice, the, the, the choice is not uh, something uh, physical that I can touch. The choice is something I'm making within me. But since he knows what's within my, myself, he knows what my choices are and why I made them. He said, as long as you're making the right choices, this is why I don't like the word sin. The word sin, as far as I'm concerned, was invented by Catholicism uh, for Christianity. It doesn't mean anything in Islam at all. We have choices, wrong choices, bad choices, <laughs> bad deeds, <laughs> bad <laughs> intentions, but we don't have sins in, in the Quran. Yes. I tell my Christian friends all the time, I love Jesus and I worship God. Yes, yes, yes. That, that, I, uh, I, I, I worship God because God deserves to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I serve other uh, human beings, no, regardless of their religion, regardless of who they are, regardless of color. I serve other human beings because when I choose to, when my choices are to please God, that necessitate that I serve humanity. So the base in every Abrahamic religion, yes. you'll find it in Leviticus, you'll find it in the Gospels, you find it in the Quran, is to worship Allah, to worship God, our creator, and to love your neighbor. It's, it's the same foundation. Yes. 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 Yeah. So uh, my purpose here on earth is to try to be as much of a servant as I can be. Uh,